here Derek Zabrotsky and Wojtek Fuss. Hey uh, guys. Hey, we gotta do t uh, today some color theory stuff. Uh, we just want to start with some basis that Wojtek will guide you through his knowledge, and we will. Try. Yeah, and we try to figure out together some things, which uh, which are very which are very interesting, I guess. And okay, let's give the word to Wojtek. Hey guys, I'm very happy to be here again, and. Um, we are very surprised by, by your uh, response to the group and uh, all the works you have submitted, so it's all very nice from, uh, that you put so much work to us. And right now uh, I want to go straight into a little color theory demo, which I don't want to be a straight uh, theory demo. I want it to be a little... Um, guide uh, through four concepts that will make uh, color more practical to you. Um, these are just my opinions and stuff that I uh, think works, so that's just stuff uh, that I use to work. Uh, don't uh, take it as, you know, some kind of master knowledge, it's, it's just my stuff that I figure out uh, along the way. So. Uh, okay, let's start. Um, there was uh, so many questions about color. Uh, what it is, uh, how does it work? Uh, a lot of people seem to have a real problem with um, going from value to color. It, it looks like they are a little bit lost and they do not know where to begin because there's so many possibilities with color. It's like um, I read this article, a couple of scientists did a research how much of actual hue variations can we see and it turned out that a uh, human eye can see 2.3 million hues, so it's fucking complex. There's so many possibilities to, uh, you know, you don't have that much colors on your monitor, but still it's it's a huge, huge number which gives a, a huge amount of possibilities and a huge a field of failure if you don't have any rules to follow. So let me st let me start from wait let me start from science actually. Yep. I don't want you guys to bore you so that will be very fast. So that this uh, electromagnetic wavelengths. So this is a whole spectrum. I don't know if it's a whole spectrum, but you know, here we have a longer wavelengths and shorter wavelengths. And in the middle you have a wavelengths of visible light. So our eyes are capable of picking up that amount of wavelengths. So we can perceive this is like a whole spectrum, right? Um, so basically, that's the science of it. Uh, and let me go to the next one. So the first concept that I want to introduce to you is uh, color contrast. Why did, the, did I sh just show you a uh, uh, wavelength spectrum? Uh, because right now I want to, I want to show you a color wheel. Because a color wheel is just a way to show which color stands to opposite, which color stands in opposite to another, uh, so we can figure out the contrast. So we have like a yellow in here, which stands in opposite to the purple. Uh, in here we have an orange, which which stay in opposite to light blue, and so on. So the color wheel is useful in that way to figure out what creates the biggest contrast possible. But this contrast exists only in our brains and uh, I think it's a survival thing. We just as human beings evolved for so long that we figure out in our brains how to distinguish things. So that's why um, 
it works that way because as a human beings we have, we have been evolving for, for so many years and uh, it just creates this kind of harmony. So let me come back to actual wavelengths. Like you see there's no circle in here. Wavelengths are linear, so they are coming from red, orange to yellow, green, blue, violet. There is no opposite color, right? There's no like red stands in opposite to green. There's no such thing because the color wheel works only in our brain. So there is no opposite color scientifically. There is only like an emotional and uh, visual kind of impact in that. So scientifically, no contrast between colors exists. And that was kind of surprising for me because I thought that this is kind of science, but but no, it's uh, it's much more um, flexible way to um, to actually pick up color as a very uh, um, medium that you can play with. So uh, that's that what ma made me really uh, much more calmer about my. Uh, learning of color. Uh, so that's the first concept. So color contrast. Uh, contrast exists only in our brains and you can manipulate it uh, choosing colors from the wheel, right? So it's very useful to remember wh which color stands in opposite to another. So if, when you will learn that, you will give yourself a power to really manipulate a mood, emotional impact in your work and that's very, very important stuff. So let me uh, go to the second concept, which is, which is uh, when color of the light meets the surface. And uh, why, am, why, why am I going through that stuff? Because I see plenty of work that is wrong when it, go, when it comes to uh, depicting uh, light in an accurate way. I will do a quick demo of what I'm talking about and then I will show you some images from movies and from animations and from uh, and a couple of master works. So I have two spheres in here. Let me just go through Photoshop and set up. I will show you what I see most of the times and um, how much uh, actual mistakes I've seen. So and then I will try to repair it so you can, I think you can benefit from that. Let's set up a simple file. I hope I won't bore you to that, guys. It will be a very quick demo, nothing fancy, so just one sphere in here that I will fill up with a little bit darker gray. I will duplicate and do that. Okay, so let's put that sphere in a simple, the, the most simple situation possible. Let's take a red light. And let's hit that sphere with this light from this angle. So we have like a red light coming from that direction, right? Not orange, but red. All right. And what I see most of the people do is, okay, let's let's say that this sphere, this local color of this sphere, is gray, right? So when this color hits this surface, here is what happens. Here is the wrong thing that happens.
Sorry, guys. I don't know what's happening with this Google, with this Google thing. Let me fix it. Darek, are you here? Yep. Continue, where, please. Where, where have I stopped? Darek? Yeah? Where have I stopped? Like. Uh, uh, when you were talking about the uh, lighting effect on the clean white. All right. You have to back a, a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. This Google thing is crashing all the time. Alrighty. <coughs> so red light. Adar, can you mute your thing or just? Darek? Yeah. Can you mute your? Okay. Because it's a little bit too loud. There's an echo. All right, so here's what I see in most of the like uh, beginners artworks. There is like light coming to the color of light and then transitioning to the actual local color of the surface uh, that is hitting. So that that is just not true scientifically. What to what what is really happening? So let me go to the sphere that is correct in terms of how the light works in here. So again, red light coming, hitting a sphere. It, does, it just doesn't give us white light. It just doesn't go that far into the spectrum. This is what happens. Red light hitting a gray ball is giving us, in, in its highlights, the color of actual light hitting. So this is just just make it a little bit darker so we can see and when I will put a highlight on that. So that is what's really happening. This, this red light gives us a red highlight and then that color is slowly fading off as it goes around the surface and it goes into the local color of the ball. It depends on which angle it hits but I hope you get the concept. So right now I will try to show you how it works in uh, and uh, other artists' artworks. Let me come back to that. All right. So here we go with a uh, sergeant painting. Uh, how is it similar to the stuff I just showed you? Again, imagine that his head is a ball, right? His local color of the skin is somewhere around here. It's like this kind of pinkish skin tone, right? So that's the local color of the skin. And in the whole scene in here, we can see a light coming from this angle. Quite cold light, right? So it's possibly light coming from the window. It's hitting his forehead, and that's where we can tell that this is very cold light source because it's a color of this light source, right? So it's then it's slowly getting into the color of the actual skin tone, and then it goes into the color of the skin tone in the shadow. So it's again, it's that it is a that simple concept, right? Again light hitting the surface here and slowly fading off into the skin tone. Again, this is a very bright and very cold light source. Don't get, don't take it as a pure white light or 
pure white paint. It's just a colder version of the light. Again, another painting from Sargent. This time with a totally different lightning. So you have a pure, really, really warm light source that this this some kind of lantern that the girl is holding. So like you see, it it gives. There's almost no glow to this piece. You see, no glow. The actual light is indicated by the areas that is it affecting. So like you see, this is kind of orangish reddish color that is hitting her face, like you see in here. And it, in here, it's the color of the actual light source that is slowly fading off into the local color of the, her skin tone. Right? There's also a second light source in this piece that is coming like from top above. It's a rather colder, a little bit overcast light that is probably just diffused skylight and it's hitting her neck in here yeah, because there's no harsh shadows so it's probably overcast day almost evening also in here look at her hand there's a light coming from here that is like orangish it looks look how he managed to depict that so this area is lit and its color is actual color of the light source, right? And it's coming around the surface to the color, local color of her hand. Just a little bit pink, a little bit uh, like colder color, which has a lot of like a little bit muted violets. It's a it's a real poetry when I look at his paintings. It's just beautiful decision making while painting. So, okay, let's move to another one. Another sergeant one. So here we have a very moody, uh, very moody environment and uh, red walls and red orange kind of lightning. Like you see, same situation is happening. So red light hitting her face and it's slowly coming back into the local color of the light source. Again, this is a screenshot from Prometheus. So here you can see very cl clearly what I'm talking about. So um, if the camera would pick up all the stuff that human eye can see, there would be no white in here. There would be pure yellow. So think of it as a light source that is pure yellow. Because why is it white? Because camera doesn't have that range to depict depict the proper uh, color information. So this is a yellow kind of cold yellow light source, which is hitting his face. And look, there's no like pure white coming. There's like actual color of the light source that is wrapping around his face and coming to the color of his skin that is affected also by, by this ball right so look again this ball is giving a glow that is uh, white pure white probably and look at, at his nose this is a specular highlight from this ball so actually what that is in here it is a reflected light source that is slowly wrapping around and disappearing in the shadow in the local color of his skin, right? Again, in here, there's also same situation, right? There's also one light from above and right hitting his hair. Here we have a highlight, and it's slowly fading off as it comes more towards us. Yeah. Okay. Next one. I love this scene from Star Wars. It's 
so greatly lit, so dense and dramatic. There is uh, orange light coming from uh, from very low angle. So all the uh, actors are lit from uh, from the bottom, which gives a very different kind of look because the light is very very warm. So look again. Look at these parts here on her shirt. She's lit by the light source from above. You can see the light is shining through these holes. So there's probably one right at the bottom uh, between her legs or something. So it's coming up and hitting these folds. Their actual color of the light source that is coming into the local color of her costume. Right? So it's a very simple and basic concept that I think a lot of people are uh, forgetting about. Let's look at his hand in here. Right. It's, it has been hit by the light from above, from uh, below, and it just reflects it. And it's wrapping around to give you a little color in here of his costume, affected by the ambient light of the scene. All right, coming to the next one. This is from Puss and Boots. So there is a thing uh, that is glowing from below, and again, it's a kind of sicky green color. So as you can see on his finger in here. This area is, is getting most of that green light, and it's not getting into white at all. There's no white. There's just green that is as the form turns, going into the local coral of his uh, finger, and then again coming to the much more colder ver version of the light coming from above. It's probably kind of a moonlight or something. Again, same thing happening on the key on his nose, on his lips, from green to the local color of the skin. From green to the local color of the skin. Don't you do not use that much white in your pieces. Uh, go for a kind of pure color that you can actually use and you can just experiment, set up a sim simple lighting and try to lit it by one light source and decide what kind of light it is. Is it uh, blue, yellow, and just lit the scene using the concepts I tell you. So these are the things that are glowing, like you see. Look at his fur, because fur is a surface that is very not like it's very fussy and it's diffusing light. So it's going from a little bit diffused version of green and then going slowly as the form turns into the more local orangey kind of color of his orangey brown color of his fur. All right, there's a uh, third concept that I want to introduce to you. It's a color color uh, that the color is related, right? So you have to think of color as not a global thing. You cannot tell that blue is a cool color. I mean, is it? It it, it is cool color, but not in um, in a global way. It, it is cool, right? In, when you compare it to red, but yeah, like I'm saying, when you compare it to something, so you have to have a two colors to say something about one of them. It can be cooler and or warmer in terms of temperature to the second color. So right now I will show you a chart that is uh, about that will show you how color can be relative in a very uh, extreme manner. So here you have a red red plate and kind of a little bit of yeah, what color do you see? Actually, it's a pure green. It's a pure pure gray, right? 
it doesn't look as much as gray because there's so much red around that it, it's a little bit blue. It's a cold gray, right? It's a very cold gray. Let's put it in the different environment here. It's around a blue color, which is very cold. And this time, the same gray looks totally warm, right? Yeah. This is kind of a rather cold, I would say cold green. Look how warm that gray is. How much warmth it has. It's almost like there's, I can feel oranges in there. I don't know why. It, it, it is just working that way. That human eye is looking for an opposite color. So there's some kind of reddish, kind of orangey things coming up. And this is just the same color as this is, and this is same gray, right? So you can manipulate color in the way that it gives you the feel you want. And it's not like choosing just one color. It's much more complex. So you have to think of the color. to think what color put next to each other to make it that color the way you want. All right. So I did that because I think this is kind of a boring situation. And in here, we have a, some kind of similar color, color palette. And it's not interesting, right? The color in the box is not interesting at all. And I thought. What can we do to make to how can we change the environment of the color to make it more interesting? So I just change the color of the background. Here's what happens. The color in the uh, like the border thing, this thing is the same. Look how much more interesting is it. There's some kind of vibration between color in the background and the foreground. There's no magic happening. This is just color contrast. So this suddenly is more interesting and appealing to the eye than, than just this, which is much more monochromatic. And like you see, there is no like muddy version of the color. Uh, what can be muddy in terms of color is the relationship between them. So you have to think about your color as a whole, not as just a like, color you pick in one area. There, there should be a harmony between all the colors you have in your scene. There should be like a consequence. So like you see, there is no muddy color. Like, if I would just pick a color, I don't know, yellow or something, it cannot be muddy. Muddy can be a relationship between them. So if I will pick one color and another, yeah, there, sh there can be, like, in this case, oh, shot, sorry, in this case, then be uh, some kind of unfortunate relationship between the colors. So there's not so much interest in here, not so much stuff happening. So what you can think of is how to improve my colors, how to make it vibrate, to make it more appealing to the eye, to make it more lively. Look at Impressionists' paintings. They were doing it over and over again. And when you will have a painting of an Impressionist, and you will zoom way, way in, you will see a small dots and dots of paint that are contrasted to each other and are a huge source of information for us to make it to just teach ourselves how to manipulate color uh, to make it more appealing to the eye. So I have chosen a work of uh, Jeff Watts. I have been studying, uh, this is my teacher actually, that I've been studying for three months with. So. He's a great, great painter. Like you see, he paints in a very rough way. What I wanted to show you 
is how he manages to use the concept I just told you about, about uh, using uh, different versions of color to make it lively and vivid, like you see in here. This color, when I would took that color and just paint it over the white canvas, it would be boring. It would be boring, then boring, right? I would go straight for, for, for reds, vivid stuff that I could, you know, that I think human flesh would look like. But look what happens with that color when there is some saturated areas around them. You see, it starts to relate to each other and actually create some kind of uh, relationship that makes our eye happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think Jeff is great at manipulating paint. Right. Another one. Look how, look how beautifully he chooses color. Like this in here. This is almost gray, right? But it doesn't look that way because there's so much saturated areas around it that makes it really really different color and gray Again, I think that was done probably in like 30 minutes by Jeff, I can tell it's Jeff so again, look how much saturated areas are around this face and look at that piece of color. It's so low in saturation, but it, it it is working with that red, with this pink. It's just the way it is. Look, this is a gray. This is a gray color, right? It's surrounded by the very saturated areas, but it works. So we have to think of color as the like a clay you are creating. All the color you put in the scene, they have to, it has to work with the other one because, and they work together as a whole, telling the story, telling the concept, creating some kind of emotional impact on your, uh, on the viewers. Yeah, emotional impact. The last concept I want to sell, sell you, talk, talk, tell you about is that color creates mood, right? Color is a very strange and it's basically an artifact of our minds uh, to make us survive, to distinguish things. That's why the color contrast exist right so I just found a cheesy picture of what color can actually mean what the, the actual color can can mean but I don't want you to relate to that in like a full way I think uh, any of you has his own uh, thoughts about what actual colors look like also just seeing some kind of color creates the emo emotions that we can identify and remember. Okay, I see this picture and, all right, this creates that kind of feeling in me. I will remember that and I will use it next time. I will, I will want to create that kind of feeling in my uh, audience, right? I won't go through all of that. I will just show you the couple of pieces of artwork that I find very enjoyable to look at. So, this is a piece by Sławomir Maniak. He is a Polish illustrator. This is done for Legends of Cryptids. Look at these greens. These greens aren't aren't happy greens. These greens aren't grass greens. These greens are sick. These greens are sick greens. They are very unhuman, unnatural. We are connecting them with like magic, um, 
possession infection, right? So that's a very wise color uh, decision in here. Probably Brief was telling him, okay, this cheat is kind of infested or something, so you have to, you know, show us to some kind of possessed or has some magical necromancy powers, right? There's also a lot of red coming. Why reds? Because they look fucking good with greens, so that's why. And also, this, this creates contrast, right? Another piece. I don't know who, who created that, but I really like the feel of it. You have uh, just white and black. In general, there's just white and black. Uh, and some kind of very muted skin tone. So what white creates is a very pure kind of unhuman and clean look. And very techy. So it's kind of high technology it gives you a high technology feel, very clean, very sterile. Uh, when you add a kind of a gray, it almost always creates that look. So it's a very clean. It also, um, uh, when I think about white, it's it's also very uh, like um, color that is. Uh, uh, very clean, very, uh, very good in some ways, but also for me it means like death, like no life. I just connected with that, like a kind of a sp spiritual kind of, you know, lack of life. Right, this is another piece from Maniac. Uh, look at, at these reds in here. Very beautiful. They are. Uh, when I look at them, <clears throat> I can tell that this character is probably a very passionate, very uh, also very uh, brave, probably, and very uh, you know, he's not stupid, cocky fuck, probably. He looks uh, as much more uh, passionate kind of guy, right? So, reds in here, very, very nice choice. And look how uh, saturated they are and how low in saturation the background is. There's almost no color. That's why these reds look like that. If I would put like a lot of blue in here, that wouldn't be that striking, right? If Or orange. These grays are just making the way for this red to be red as hell. This is a uh, Craig Mullins. I bet you know him. Look at his greens. They're very calm. They're like they perfectly match the scene. They're telling you that this is like some kind of calm environment. This is a grass. There's no danger. There's some sort of, yeah, like you see, reds, oranges coming through to make that color vibrate. So it is also a very nice, uh, very nice tool to make a color vibrate. To make an opposite color, light below, right below that. And again, look at that. There's almost no color in here. This is kind of a very gray stuff happening. That's why these greens were, are working so well. And that's why they are so lively. This is by Jamie Jones. And look how he managed to capture a character, uh, the mood of a character through the backgrounds, right? So here we have some kind of pastel -y. Very muted, cyan green. We have a bright yellow, right? It's a very strong statement. It's very hard to make it work, but he did it. And again, almost no saturation in here. And 
And another piece by Jamie Jones. It's called Doomsday, and it basically shows the end of the humanity, probably. Look how uh, he has chosen the color for that piece. It's, it is basically yellow, right? Yellow and a little bit of an orange and the warm reds in these trees. Uh, but it's not a happy orange. It's not the orange of the sunlight. It's a very diffused kind of orange that is very dry. That is making... That's very, like, a little bit sicky yellow. Yeah. Like, there, there is some kind of contamination in the air. Yeah, that's, that's how I connect to that very strange kind of yellow. You cannot see the sky that color anytime, right? It's very strange. Very alien-like. And guess what? We have an alien in here. Yeah, look at these shapes, how sexy they are. Damn it. It's one of the best, right? Another piece by Mania. Very monochromatic. Purple, right? The first word is purple. So, what purple gives you is a kind of magical feel. Also, it's a very rich color, like uh, if you want to paint with purple and oils, you will spend tons of money on that paint. So, your mind has some kind of thinking, hard-coded, that the purple is a very rich color. I, not, not in terms of actual hue, but in terms of expenses that you have to make to paint with that color. So it's a very rich color that gives you a feel a little bit of a high-class luxury kind of thing, but it is also very magical, very, uh, yeah, just a very magical color. And again, look how the second concept I told you about is applied in here. So basically, he did what photography uh, would do with that kind of a scene. He blow out all of the uh, light in the light source, right? Straight in the light source, it's, it is blown out. But look what's happening. The actual color of the light isn't white. There's just no information in here about what's happening. Because camera cannot go that bright with color. So, it's actually just purple going and hitting her, her head. She has, a, like you see, a black kind of her. Sorry for that. And it's hitting her head and slowly goes into the color, local color of her head, of her hair, right? So remember, next time you will paint, don't go straight for whites. Think about the color of your light source. It is very strong in here, so it creates almost a rim. Yeah, so that's all for me. I, 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 I am pretty sure I made some mistakes, so for, sorry for that. I'm not fully competent in that field, uh, and I'm just more uh, fluent with that stuff uh, in practice. So I hope I will apply some of that stuff with uh, over paintings we'll do with Tarek. I hope you enjoy and um, yeah, you will apply some of that concepts. Thanks, guys. Heading up to Tarek. A great speech, Wojtek. It was outstanding knowledge, I think. Uh, we got to switch to some practice now. Uh, let me tell you about the colors in light as a complementary what Wojtek told it is just extended subject and we we have a lot of examples how the light is working yeah the Wojtek uh, told uh, mainly about the colors and it was just yeah uh, basic knowledge you have to you have to imply in your work if you are aware of what's going on here you will uh, you will easily put some 
put some impact into that and your lighting effects will increase your color knowledge will will, will be more awareness and uh, let's talk about some directional light and what the light is working uh, when it's direct directionally so uh, here is example of the work Craig Mullins it's just freaking great work he just masters as you know so yeah let's focus on the light where it's coming from how it's cast the main poles main character and how it will be drawn on the huge marble work mar marble wall uh, it's just the light coming from the that point or middle or just a little bit more down to the top of the picture maybe I will just put it in the Photoshop how it's just working so we have the scene and Wojtek can you mu mute yeah, your yeah, microphone? Yeah I'm just, okay. yeah, I'm just okay. doing that go okay, ahead thank, thanks, man. okay the light is coming from that from that direction it just cast the cast the character in that way and it is just the image of how the light is coming and scattering around from all these edges you can easily see what is the source of light how how it's intensive because it just cast huge shadow and you you can guess oh it's just a big character no it's just the light from very very below here and it just make very dramatic look it's just some kind of trick in art that it, it creates the in it, it just make the picture more interesting and more dramatic it just it can be just simple scene like this the man who is coming from some to castle walls or so and the light is coming exactly f point him and it just make just that freaking good huge shadow so yeah we just can establish where is the light com coming from looking on the photo or on or just the picture we have many many other examples how the light is working for example let me see let me tell you about um, maybe that work I just love that work it just uh, is the work of uh, Marek Okoń he is just Polish painter digital painter another another master one he just reflect and uh, make his works very uh, very dramatic looking a lot of storytelling in it uh, it's also include a lot of um, some very dramatic lights and the things that make the image very interesting let's see this area what's going on here it's just outstanding how the light is coming through this uh, I don't know about maybe wood uh, poles or something and it's cutter in that direction casting shadows on the main character and it just give the uh, impression of dramatic shadows how it's just uh, how it just uh, depicted it's the way of I was awesome storytelling about lighting. If you have a knowledge to imply that 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 things, it for sure create your work much more interesting. If there is, if there was just a hole, the light would be very normal, normal like, and no, no, the things were would be happening like this. Let's see what would happen in in these areas. 
it wouldn't be just uh, great dramatic strobes, uh, sunbeams or something. It would be just normal lighting effects. And yeah, it uh, wouldn't be that interesting, I guess. So let's see another one. Hey, Derek, can you just uh, move uh, the microphone a little bit away from your... Uh, okay, okay. Because it's like doing a strange things. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Can yeah. you hear me good? Huh? Yeah, 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 it's okay. The next one is just uh, the work of Maciej Kuchara, another Polish beast. <laughs> the, the light in it is just uh, cast from in front of the viewer, so you cannot see the light, the light source in it. You can just see the effect of this. So yeah, we uh, last week we had some sunbeams <laughs> subject we all discussed uh, very widely, and it yeah, just yeah. and it just uh, was shown like let me let me show you that. Man, again, uh, there is some artifacts with your microphone. If you would just uh, keep it away a little bit away, well, so there's uh, like strange booms. Wait a bit, Wojtek. Yeah, it's it's just to cl I can hear you. You your breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah totally, man. Totally, man. Okay, thanks. So yeah, uh, let's talk about some directions in the light. Uh, in this one, in this one, the picture of Maciej Kuchara, you have the light from in in front of you, as I said. And uh, you can just uh, establish how the light is working, how the light is uh, putting some dramatic effects. The same way it can be, uh, it can be just uh, told when you see the light, which is coming uh, directly in front of you when you are bes beside the trees. You can just see all the happening things here. Let me just outline it a bit, just horizontal. Some sun, uh, some <laughs> some source, which is the sun, of course, in this one, and it's just cast all the light, all the way, sun beams, sun uh, sunrise, uh, just uh, throwing into the trees and casting the shadows exactly in the direction how the sun is working so you can easily see it in this situation and yeah you can see uh, the depicting lighting in other ways can be very interesting not just uh, normal light which can which have affect on the object but it can be just uh, more play with lights. As Wojtek said about the colors, it's all about the playing with colors, play, playing with variations and all the visual aspects of that. It's all about the playing with with uh, lights too. So let's see another one. This is the same situation as I uh, showed you uh, last three. Uh, 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 few seconds ago. This is the light, it's coming from the top left corner. You can easily see what's going on on the surface of the of the forest and how it is just what's going on with light which is crossed and the shadows which are casted on the surface let's see how many how many different scattering is going out here you have these dark areas which are just shadowed but but uh, by uh, the trees which are in front of that which are in front of that uh, in, in front of that uh, picture you can uh, easily imagine because the light is coming in one direction and the trees are all around here and cast the shadows on each other 
making many variations with colors. Uh, there are more illuminations, more intensive lights. It's all about the place where the light is coming. You can see there possibly, possibly it, there is more spacey in here than in here because these areas are sh in shadow and these are enlightened and you can easily you can easily imagine what's going on here the same is with just normal cast shadows on the surface let's see how many variation of colors are here there is no there is no clean dark in it it's all about the values so let's skip very fast to another subject which is connected with with uh, colors and light, it, which is values. We can just make a new document and see this as the example. Some script f from the movie. And yeah, this is the some night uh, which has a casted light in front of him. A part, a part of the light which is coming here and illuminate all the environment around him here and here but the main character is easily seen and it is just frontal light which cast him from the uh, some source light it can be just artificial or or not I assume that is some kind of natural light which comes from some curve or, or something in the in the rocks or, 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 or so and <clears throat> it easily see it easily uh, show you how the values are divided let's see what is the variation and what is the intensity of the value here and here it's all about the, the materials and how they absorb the light, how they, are, they can uh, bounce the light. As you know, the, as you know, the metal, metallic uh, surfaces bounce light much, in much more visible way than, than just regular, regular, uh, regular materials like uh, cotton or so so you can see <clears throat> all the just uh, very highlighted light in in that area and uh, here you can you can just uh, com compare it in, in in that way how how the values are are divided and uh, if, they, if we have very, very, uh, very powerful source of light, the, the, the things like materials of cotton or, or so can easily bounce back the light in a very highlighted way. So if the sun, if the uh, source light is just um, very close to the object, for example, it will be just uh, some kind of gray or very uh, very bright source of light we just some hole in the rock maybe it can easily affect the materials in very very intensive way so it would be just uh, edge light or so uh, cotton would be just much more uh, in bounced light and the same is with the metallic which is always very very much uh, bounced light so let me uh, show you on the example we just uh, very fastly um, very fastly draw okay something like this we can just make some pose with some elements of cotton maybe 
don't bother to use the references to show you how the materials are working in different in different uh, lighting effects in different uh, lighting sources maybe okay i will just draw in very fastly simple simple pose maybe it's just sore kisser Okay, she has some cloak on her. Cloaks are very difficult to, 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 to draw for me and I like to uh, study uh, drapery a lot in different, uh, in different lighting, uh, different lightings. It gives you a lot of knowledge about this subject. Okay, we just have regularly regularly enlightened uh, pose here so and as Wojtek uh, told you it can be um, it can be reflected in many in many many other ways like artificial light which uh, Swarovski maniac used to on his uh, pictures so it can be just some kind of light like this very artificial and magical and yeah how it will affect on the lighting uh, with surfaces you have to depict and it's the same as i told previously it's all about the materials and absorbing the lights uh, the that cloak it can bounce and uh, absorb the light in that way that it can be just absorbed in the half of tones and it just will look like this something like this maybe the same with the face, which uh, bounce light mm, for sure much more in much more intensive way that that uh, the, the cotton is the cotton uh, do. So yeah, you can see how the materials and how the skin or or just uh, other things are working when the light is very intensive and it's very close to the to the to the our character let's give her uh, maybe some metallic thing on her put her some armor or maybe it's very fast same sample so very ugly I guess yeah I just start with very dark part of that and slightly divide them into the uh, accurate I think this, this is accurate what what I see the values are just working not using clean dark at all Dark, bl dark black, or or just clean that on just clean white in it, because as Wojtek said, uh, playing with colors, but not in just top uh, top uh, dim just top of the uh, of of the light lightings and the dark dark darkness parts. Let's 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 play with with half tones as as much as you can, and in the end you can just emphasize emph emphasize some some things with uh, some um, white strokes and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, let's go to the material how it works. 
in that light this is no clean white and no clean dark in it it's just regular um, regular half tones uh, in, asso in association to the cotton materials and yeah we had we wanted to put on her some armor so the metallic metallic uh, material which just bounce the things much more in much more intensive way so may she just her has armor with very intensive metallic let's see how it works here and yes it is just it is much more intensive in comparison to the cotton she's wearing too so the cotton can be just subdued a little bit yet and the metal is just bouncing back the light very visible in that way I guess so yeah the same example is just on our reference let's see this not that good quality of picture but it shows this exactly what I mean there is lighting um, from in front of us casting on the objects and lighting them and you can easily see how the materials are bouncing our light source you can see how many highlights here here and here here and in many other parts of all the metallic things how they are bounced back and you can see uh, I don't know it's just wooden barrel or so how it absorb light you just don't see that much highlight in it let's put it into black and white so you can easily see how the values are divided the most highlighted uh, part of the barrel, wooden barrel, are mm, I don't know a bit in just half tones of the metallic thing. How the metallic is bouncing it, and it just shows you the way the materials uh, are absorbing and uh, pushing back the light you can easily start with the value at first every time you want to to, to, to achieve uh, accurate values and if you are if you have the division of the values well uh, well outlined you, you your, your colors will will be I guess much more accurate and uh, overall picture will not be just contrasty and you will uh, avoid a lot of dirty parts uh, I used to to make some uh, basic basic uh, mistakes like the light was coming and uh, the material was in the same sensitivity of the light it can be a little bit effective um, just like cheap trick and but uh, there is no real connection with what's going on in the nature I guess uh, I just obs observing a lot of things which are going in the nature so that kind of very very strong light uh, bounces back bounce back even on the materials like uh, cotton are visible in 
the situation when the light is just crossing the surface the surface of the normal character so let's just draw very dark posture and you know it's it's just posture which is seen in fully uh, fully light which is coming through them so um, to just close it to you uh, you can easily put your hand uh, in the light in, in exactly in the right in the like direction like uh, I don't know a lamp or, or the sun in in the daylight you just try to look through the look into the sun through your hand and you will easily see the hand is coming the hand is uh, going to be very dark and only just outlines of the light which is uh, pointing the object are the same sensitivity and the same contrast like the source of light which can be I don't know uh, maybe here and uh, we just yeah we just see only the parts are uh, very very edgy and uh, uh, the part of the edges uh, on the on the character are and like then in the same way in the same uh, value saturation uh, uh, sensitivity like like the source of light but it's not uh, the only effect uh, which can be seen in that uh, situation this the another effect which is uh, going to to occur in that situation is uh, color corona uh, which is very well uh, described in the book we recommended last time uh, James Garney color and light and the color corona it's the place where the light is just uh, leaving us some uh, un, uh, un uncoming uh, rays which which are uh, are not totally going through through the overall character and just leave a uh, glowy effect uh, on the edges so you can uh, easily see it has the situation on a lot of photographs uh, while <clears throat> while the sunset is coming or the sunrise the sun is really close to the horizontal and uh, to 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 just show you that uh, let's uh, write in very simple very simple environment it's not even environment but it just the uh, it just it fragment and the part of that situation there we we have some some kind of mountains and uh, the surface it's all about uh, the val values right now because uh, maybe in the next session we will just uh, tell it uh, a little bit more about the colors uh, in this situations uh, not only the values but the values are are the most important things in all that stuff so you have just I don't know some kind of uh, some kind of uh, some kind of sunset which is coming uh, which is coming close to the horizontal it just leaves a lot of value graduations from the very intensive when the light uh, from the sun is coming to very to very uh, subdued one when the light when the when it's just far away from the regular sun uh, so let's talk about the color corona this in the same way here you can easily see that effect it just uh, it just uh, named also lens flare in very famous uh, it's just very famous uh, things in uh, movies and uh, all that stuff uh, when the when the 
lens are just distracting the the light in very very uh, big uh, with many with ma in many ways uh, our eye our eyes just see the particles in uh, the in the air which are which scatter the light it can be seen in uh, many shapes like uh, I don't know, it's just uh, mm, triangles or so. And it's all about the uh, bouncing back the lights from the, from, the, from, the, from the source which just casting our, our object. So mm, Color Corona here is uh, enlightening the part when the light is uh, casting just uh, dark, uh, dark uh, curves, and it just give the effect of lens flare, as you see. Um, so you can easily see how how it it's, it's working in the nature, and and a lot of uh, a lot of pictures uh, show it. Um, you can easily see how the gradation of color corona has the effect on on the the objects which are very close to the to the light source on in here and in here and this this is this, the situation when 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 the light light is just very intensive and it's very close sorry to the horizontal so it's giving the effects of enlightening the edges so yeah this is the same situation here uh, with just subsurface uh, scattering uh, when the light is coming through some material and you can easily see the hair of that horse are uh, absorbing a lot of light and it just seen as um, almost white uh, white uh, uh, hair hair uh, solid but it, it just came through it and Enlightened in many other ways that just uh, gives you exa an expression of enlightenment. So yeah, uh, telling about uh, the light direction uh, can be also um, told on the examples from the nature with uh, sunlight. Uh, we can uh, easily see that that one is just. Uh, just photo uh, shot in uh, Sunday light, very very sunny day uh, when the light is coming um, in that direction. That direction, you can see how the shadows are casted here. You can easily establish the lighting direction on here. So um, I would like to say a little bit more about the uh, just some quick tips about the colors in uh, lighting yet. Uh, as they are complementary what Wojtek told because he just uh, expressed you a lot of knowledge and uh, I think he, he, you will have a lot of Mm, source for uh, for our our uh, our views now because it's all about your own observation, your own um, investigation of uh, how the light is working, how the colors are are um, occurring in uh, exact light. So just a few few very simple few very simple uh, tips for the lights. Uh, I would like to start with that uh, with that um, sunlight picture. Uh, we got a picture with no clouds in here, and we can easily see how many bluish bluish uh, areas are are visible in that painting. You you just can uh, you just can. Uh, um, thinking uh, why why the, there is so much blue in, in that picture and uh, 
I will tell you about a uh, very very easy situation when the uh, when uh, while you can observe uh, uh, every day for the very first is when the when the sky is cloudless is no one cloud is on the sky the uh, the sky is clean uh, very clean bluish uh, bluish uh, violet and in, in some parts and maybe a little bit more bright blue in the horizontal it's just uh, is associated with the light I don't know it maybe it's just uh, um, some um, some kind of morning or so and you can see as I said a lot of bluish on that in that part on the picture yeah it's it's uh, according to the cloudless sky it's just very interesting thing but uh, I always start my illustrations with uh, establishing the background color uh, because it all have the effect of, of your of your final final color work and your final for final work so if we just work with the with the picture uh, which is uh, dependent on the um, on the sky or, or just background uh, let's see how the how that in, in, how is the impact of, of that on the colors not only the light which is coming from the sky or are any other artificial artificial source uh, let's see uh, let's back, go back uh, again to the bluish it just came from exactly it is uh, thanks to the sky which has no clouds uh, why it's blue is because it, we just have a very regular uh, blue sky which, uh, which just has the effect of, of, of the colorish or of the all, all the uh, colors in the shadows that are very cold and uh, bluish so that's, uh, that's again uh, because the background has a lot of impact on that uh, if we just switch to the picture where when the sky is overcast or uh, or maybe uh, or maybe rainy day uh, you will easily see how how many uh, how many subdued colors are in it there is no blue there is no just clean uh, oranges uh, or, or or some yellows that uh, comes from the sun it's all covered with clouds misty and haze maybe and it just has the effect on overall the colors on that scene uh, you can see uh, the sky is just grayish and uh, it's a little bit uh, filtered uh, photo I guess because there is some green but uh, yeah if it doesn't have um, the exact light like like the Sun which is casting and coming to the picture it just uh, is much much less much much less col colorful uh, and all the colors are subdued in, in this situation so uh, to remember this situation is mm, the colors which are uh, which are gathered from the sky which is uh, which is uh, cloudy mm, are very very which are going to the grays in the shadows uh, in the lights are, are just uh, desaturated or so uh, opposite to that uh, sunny days are, are just leaving a very wide range of bluish and and in the in the shadows and some uh, beautiful oranges and 
a very clean yellowish in the, the, the highlights. So I would like to, to, to tell you, just remember about uh, overall, overall uh, background which has the effect of what's going on on the scene. Uh, to the last of my words, I would like to, to, to just show you something. A lot of people uh, just m make some pictures with, uh, I don't know, maybe local colors, which are not, which are not very effective which are not uh, shown in the affected ways of what's going on in the nature. So we have, uh, I don't know, maybe just regular color skin, uh, hand in very uh, sunny day, but uh, people uh, don't remember to just Mm, putting some light ranges which are just uh, which are all uh, dependent on the uh, on what's going on in the background so just leave it saturated not looking on what's going on if we desaturated it a little bit and you can easily see there is much more connection in it in association to the to the colors of background, as Wojtek said uh, about the overall lighting effect, which just came through the character and leave the colors, uh, changing the local colors into the uh, lights which are coming f in from the sources. Don't forget to. Uh, to just uh, merge overall background or just your your source light with with local colors, uh, it gives you much more. Uh, it will be just uh, all about the whole situation. It just will not uh, It will just not be divided like uh, some character is. Oh my God! It's just uh, uh, it just uh, be, it just um, uh, it's just it just thrown from the other picture. Maybe it all has it all has to be associated. All the colors from the background on the or, or the light sources have the effect of what's going on here. You just don't see clean. Um, Pur uh, clean purple or, or or just oranges of the skin here because there is no light in there and the light which is just bounced is is uh, desaturated and overall the picture is uh, hued in the one uh, one color colorization color va va value for va variation and all that stuff so uh, remember to put it in the hole, everything, and uh, yeah, uh, just make it as the one, not just divided in uh, like you just cropped from that picture and that picture. The, the shadows, the light, and the colors needs to be put together in the one. So let's just start over painting session. Man, that, yeah, was, that cool. was cool. Thanks, Wojtek. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, there's so, a there's a can you just turn down the speakers a bit? Yeah. Okay, I will. I will just uh, switch to your screen right now. Maybe right, you can. Right. Yeah, you can start some overpainting, and yeah, sure, uh, sure. we just switch to another one. All right. All right. Yeah, if you can if just you turn can down, just down the volume, volume or just... Or just yeah, okay, I, I will mute it, okay? Ha, you yeah, can take you a can headphone. Take headphone so. Oh, okay. Alright, so guys, there is some uh, questions about uh, how to actually manage to learn color, because all the stuff I was talking about, 
you know, that's the stuff I talked about, right? There's no practical use of it. Uh, like, there is, but you cannot just sit and do that. You have to do something to apply this knowledge, right? So I will show you the ways uh, I find the most enjoyable uh, ways to learn color, uh, how to manipulate it. So the first thing is, of course, studying. But what can we study? First off, we can study uh, still life, right? That's the most, um, probably the best way to study. Uh, but n not in terms of uh, storytelling, but in terms of actual uh, being here and seeing color. Um, so first, still life. Set up a still life. Make it like one light source, simple stuff. Start from one object, paint it, share it. Uh, yeah, so that's the first thing, still life. Second thing, it's... Uh, what I find the most beneficial, and for especially for, for illustrators, uh, I found the most uh, beneficial way to study is study from uh, movie stills, from screen caps, from movies, animations. Uh, why is that? Why is that so beneficial? Because there's so much money involved in this field of movies and animations that these people that are working on that stuff uh, they, uh, there's like twenty thousand dollars spent on one minute on a film. I think it's it's much more for different kinds of movies. But you know, that's a huge amount of money and huge amount of responsibility uh, about what's in the actual picture in the movie, right? So when you will pick that kind of a picture from the movie. For example, I don't know, the still, still uh, is from, the sh from Shrek, right? It will be probably uh, like that one frame will be worth like five or six thousand dollars or more. You will just have to figure out the budget of the film and see how much actual work is put to that shot to make it the best shot possible in terms of storytelling, in terms of everything. So that's the best way uh, to study what I find about it. So I will show you my folders that I, uh, I'm i gathering, like movie still studies that I'm doing. Uh, before I was doing a lot of, let me open this file. I was doing a lot of a longer study. This is like a three-hour study from the movie called Tron. I bet you know that. So this is the frame from the movie. And here's my painting. So the goal is not to interpret color. It's just to figure out the way it is. And the, the very important thing to do is uh, to put yourself in some kind of time constraints. So you are not doodling and doodling and doodling for forever. You have to stop. Like you see, I didn't care that much about the stuff that was happening in here. I just suggested it with the main color, whereas there's a plenty of stuff happening. I just didn't care about it because what I cared about was colors, right? So why this blue glow is so nice? Because there's a lot of unsaturated areas around them. Okay, how to figure out that and that and that and I playing around with that. That's the shot from the Tron. We find another one. So again, this these are movies, right? Okay, here I have this is from Prometheus. I really like the backlight thing. What I I did it a while ago, so what I can tell you right now, what I fucked up in here is that rim light is too uniform. It's flat. It's flattening her. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's you know, it's flattening her. So again, this is a frame from a movie. I, I will try to find an actual frame. It's probably here. Yeah, it's here. Let me flip it. I can also you can see a lot a lot of like 
proportional mistakes, her head is bigger. Like, I can see that stuff now that I haven't before, because I learned. So, uh, like you see, starting from movies like that, just put a frame in here, uh, make your canvas bigger, and just paint. I can break it down for you, like the PSD I did. I tend to start from the background. So I'm trying to think what's behind. What's the main color behind? Okay, so like thinking in terms of what's the what is the element that is the far, farthest away from me. So I painted that. Then try to figure out colors a little bit more. Then I try to depict the spaceship. Some kind of shapes, computers, right? Consoles. Like you see, I, I'm trying to figure out what is in front of what, so I can put it in a in that direction, in that uh, order. Again, screen was tricky. Yeah, and a person and a couple of coronas that. Derek was talking about light coming through. Rim lights. Yeah, so that's the, basically the way I am doing a long study. I do not suggest to do it right away, the lo long studies. What I find, uh, like the longer studies are nice for also learning the subject matter uh, of the thing you're painting. So if you want to learn about the subject and also about the color of it, do a like three hour painting. That will be more than enough. What I find very enjoyable to do are studies from animations. Let me show you. I did a, like 20 of those. So these are very quick. So these are like one hour, right? So one, I give myself one hour to depict what I see and go and I'm just just painting it's mostly on one layer it's uh, from how to train your dragon very nice colors I wanted to learn them so I painted that so a lot more near like Kung Fu Panda a little bit different style right very stylized shapes very nice uh, very flat colors, I would say. I simply love the stylization, so I wanted to learn them. Yeah, so that is still one hour, right? And try to hit it like the best you can. Right, let's take another one. I want to get through all of them. Here's from uh, Tangled, right? Well, I fucked up the saturation on her cheek. You can see it right now. And some of his areas are not occluded, of, of his face are not occluded enough. But uh, you can see, uh, basically, what I'm shooting for is the same kind of effect when I'm looking at it as a thumbnail. One hour. Just do, like, one every day. Pick an animation. There's a great site that I can recommend to you. It's called Disney Screen Caps. Disney Screen Caps. It has dozens of um, s uh, screen caps from movies, from especially animations and Disney animations, Pixar animations. So I will just uh, paste this link on YouTube. All right, uh, let me try that. Nope. All right, I have to put a space. All right, it, it, it's here. All right, so it's just one brush, a little bit of lasso tool, and painting away, right? Panda. Also, when I got more fluent with these kind of studies, I like you see, I did some kind of one from up, another one from up. 
um, I just started to do more of them. So I gave myself one hour for four images, right? So one image was 15 minutes. It was much more challenging, but also very, very enjoyable for me. So painting from animations. Yeah, what it gave me is that. That's how I could paint one year ago. Like, that's the best I could do with color. You see how, how unsaturated, like... like Fuck me. <laughs> like, a little bit... Uh, a little bit... Fuck, it's just muddy. Bad colors, but, you know, strange... Um, strange values, etc. And what, what that kind of studying gave me is that basically it's uh, much more confidence with colors. Um, I'm just skipping like anatomy and edges and stuff. You will learn it along the way, but basically that's why you are doing it. It's not the best. I I, I mean I just like this piece, so that's why I'm showing it to you because it has very uh, pronounced color variation, and that's because I was working on it a lot. Doing my studies, so do your do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor and do more studies, especially for animation from animation movies and still lifes. Um, you can re read about theory a lot, but one hour of actual painting and trying to depict what you see will do far more than just reading about it. So just go and do that, and you will see the difference. So. Let me get get uh, straight into the over uh, overpainting I want to show you. Right, so I took this piece. Let me, let me tell you the name of the person who created it. Moment. All right, so that's a uh, Tech Kun. Tech Kun Marcus Scott. All right. Thanks for submitting. I what I like about this piece are proportions. They are very nicely placed, evenly, very symmetrical. The person is uh, a little bit stylized, which is nice, right? So, um, what I do not like about this piece is that the uh, skin tone doesn't really look like skin tone. It just is. It's just a little bit um, low saturation, don't you think? It doesn't have that um, richness of uh, human skin. So let's let, let let's try to fix that. I will maybe do a layer on the lighting. So I can affect only the dark areas. And let's see what kind of color is that. Like you see, it's very, it's not really a saturated color. In that environment, this could skin in the shadows probably would go more saturated. I would take a little bit more orangey kind of a color. Leave. Let's try that. Put it way down. Let's try to. More to make a transition. I don't want to, you know, make it flat. But I just, I'm just looking for richness in the shadows because uh, shadows tend to be much more uh, saturated on the skin because of subsurface scattering and the light that is traveling through the skin. I go, go for more reddish kind of tone. Like you see, how uh, that just looks dirty. Uh, there's probably some value issues in here.
Yeah, it seems the Wojtek was in disconnect again. We just wait for him to continue his job. Right, guys, sorry. Let me share my screen again. This Google fucking thing is going nuts. All right. Dara, can you hear me? Yeah, clearly. OK, okay when, when, uh, when did I stop? When the live stream was on? Uh, it was, uh, I don't know. Two minutes ago, uh, two minutes ago. All right. All right. You can mute the professor. All right, great. So, let me repeat myself. So, I was talking about an anatomy, about pronouncing the sternocleidomastoid that you did. You want to tone it down. Also, the sternocleidomastoid is coming from the ear to the collarbone. So it will also go in here. So her neck would be a little bit broader, I think. So let's just 
you like there's a lot of uh, value kind of chaos in here you want to make it more clear simplify your value areas so if there's a shadow in here make it a shadow it's going to be a really flat plane I can tell that that person uh, knows a lot about uh, color anatomy stylization so that's really nice there's just a couple things that are missing that I think should be repaired. And you see that that I think that looks much more natural. I would add that kind of rim light that is a little bit flat on her, so I will just get rid of that and add add that later. Also, like you see, this, this is so sharp. This edge is so sharp. I wouldn't do that. So again, that that sharp edge indicates that there is a strong form change in here, and that would happen only on a very skin person. So again, I'm just doing that very more. I'm just simplifying the values, going all over the place, lighting them up. You see, it, I think it looks a little bit more natural, less spotty. Okay, coming back to the face. What uh, what I think should be improved? Uh, the first thing I see in here are eyes. Her eyes are painted uh, in a little bit. Like the person who painted it, do not really understand how the eye uh, form of the eye works. Like here, there, there is like a, you see like a just kind of a line coming here and here. Like um, I would be like a flat thing. I isn't flat. Actually, okay, I can tell you about eye. It's a fucking ball like that. That is an eye, and uh, I'm just sticking out a bit from here. And there is this is like very crucial to the eye. Let me just put it a little bit down like that. And there's like an eyebrow in here, right? This part overlaps with this part. This is on top. This is on top. This is on, on the bottom. Right? This is like a flesh. Yeah, so that what is really happening. And, and you have that kind of an eye. Actually, the lashes, like let's say eye is going that way. So here we have an eye. It, it wraps around. right? So we have to think in 3D. What is happening with this eye in three-dimensional space? There's a lot of overlap. Yeah, you have to think about that. You have to, you, you have to be able to depict an eye from a different angles. So you can just practice doing that, like wrapping things around the ball. Okay, so knowing that, let's try to put it into the place. I will try to over overpaint it how I think it should be. So if the light is coming from above, I think that part wouldn't be as bright. So tone it down. Also remember, this part should be as perfect circle as possible. We tend to look straight into the eyes, into the portrait. So that's very important to be able to depict 
I'm simplifying the irises and make, make them a little bit bigger so they look unnaturally small. Also, you have to understand why turn that off. there is a light coming. There is, a, there is a light reflecting on top of the eye. Where is it coming from? Right, there is a plenty of spotty values in here, so I will just try to simplify it. Like there's too much. Uh, too much of like a border coming on around the eye. So I try to get rid of that. Just getting rid of them, necessary stuff. Also again, coming back to the last session we did. When painting eyelashes, you can simplify stuff. If that is a stylized kind of a character, you can go way below the, you know, way above the, what you think is realistic. You can go for a very, like, sometimes ridiculous amount of simplification. So again, this eye doesn't look good right now. Let me flip it. Again, the values are too bright. It needs a little bit of form change. Yeah, it needs a little bit of warmth. Let me take a light in there and just get over like that. a little bit of a red. That would happen, I think. Um, a lot in, in these areas. So again, thinking about about it as a three-dimensional space. This part is res receding. This plane is much more. It's sticking out. So I will try to do a little bit of a shadowing in here. There's a plenty of, you know, playing back and forth with that. Also, her, her eyebrows are just too pointy. We, you can try to finesse that. Look at the eyebrows. The girls and how they work. You can tell a lot of emotion, but just a small change in the eyebrow curve. That was a little bit too pointy. Yeah, so. Like you see, I, I only work on that left eye. I'm just looking for some kind of yeah. If the light is coming from, uh, let's say, side, right? It would go much more broader in here because the plane is much more. Flutter. That wasn't that. So I'll go for that. I'll go for the, if you want to indicate that the light is doing such a thing, right now you can start to reform a little bit better. My brush is just too hard for that very soft transitions in the skin tone. So her nose could be simplified a bit. It's just too, uh, too, too dark values, too much dark values in here. I can put this very hard edge in here. I can afford that, I think. I will work, from now on, I will work only on that. That should be lit, I think. 
So there should be smaller recession on the Kings Keystone in here. Right now I'll try to work only on her right side, her mouth, of her her face. Like there's too much block in here. Like I like that you simplified the her teeth into the very uh, simple shape. That's good. That looks actually better. Also avoid any wrinkles. One, even though they are there, they aren't good. Look that good. Let me take a smudge. And make that a little bit more even. Flap, flatten this up a bit. And what you see, there's a lot of playing back and forth. I'm softening a lot of the edges right now. And I will have to come back and make them much more sharper, like that. Also, let's try to make it more saturated. That's too much, right? But for the point of that presentation, I would just make it a little, a little bit too much, just to show you how it works. I will just simplify a lot of the planes, a lot of the value changes in here. Also study the um, study the painters that paint good portraits. Uh, in that way you can learn a lot about edges, where to blur things, what to paint, what not to paint. It's maybe a little bit too much. Also, that scene heavy ended a bit. Also, forehead as a shape. So, like you see, uh, I will make a small line in here just to show you what I painted through. If I haven't, basically half of the face, right? Yeah, and I will go like that, back and forth. Also, I see that there's a kind of chaos in her hair. Try to simplify it. Try to think in terms of where is light, where is shadow. Okay, light is here, dark is here, light is here, dark is here, and then back and forth. Her uh, ear is just very muddy. Maybe we can afford to lose the ear a little bit. You see, uh, I think we have a lot of light values that we can put in here because we are painting in a little bit muted palette. So I will, I can afford to take a linear dodge. Uh, blending mode and do a little bit of a light pass over the, the areas that I think that would be hit by light.
Oh, she. It's broken again. Let me share the screen. I have no idea what when it was broken, but I'm just heading to the. To the Why end. I go? Why I go, man? Huh? Why I go? It just was interrupted. What? Keep going. Keep going. All right. It's just it's like just two, like two, two more minutes. Two minutes. All right. All right. Go. All right. Sorry for a little break. I hope it wasn't too long. But as you see, I am applying a little bit, a little bit of the linear dodge effect on her, on the lighted parts. But as I'm applying that, that shadow color doesn't look that good anymore. Also, the values are a little bit uh, sloppy again. Also, that eye socket isn't that clear. So let's make it more clear in here. There's an eye socket, right? So it's. Uh, it sits in a space. See how, how much color variation I got in my uh, shadow parts? There's like violets, oranges. Let's flip that. Yeah, and right now it's a matter of what do you want to achieve? Let's put a really hard edge in here. Let's smoothen out. Let's do also a hard edge in here. That will look crisp. So let's do a hard edge in here. I think it just means that I have to I do not end with that crap. Sorry. I have no idea why it is kicking me. So let me just do a few more repairs and we are done I think. So I'm just going through that and trying to unify this piece. Let me put a actual specular highlight and some wetness into her eye. This piece is a little bit low res right now. But you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm trying to finesse that eye. Put a little bit of the light in here, going on her eyelash as it goes through. You can see what I'm doing with her lips. So I think that's it. Let's see what I actually did. Good job. Good job. Let me just, Let me show, just show the piece before, before, before and after. Okay, don't rush. Right, so so I'll I'll the PSD after the session. So I think you see it. Mainly there was a issue with uh, color, color temperature and color. color so that's it. Thanks for submitting and go ahead, Dark, do your thing. Okay, good job, man.
Ah, okay, let's go to the work of Brent Leclusy. Uh, he just wants any advice. Uh, let's just make this work a little bit more clean and mm, I don't know, maybe more deep depth of field and uh, more climate because it just has the potential in all that subject. So. Firstly, I would just change a little bit the composition right now. Putting some more uh, expression of the of the place where it's coming, so we can just put as the focal point the main um, the main mountain with. That just I don't know warrior or or some knight in front of the picture. Make it more spacey. And the composition would feel better right now. I will just crop it in. Okay, I know it might be a little bit too high right now, so just put it into the corner a little bit, and making the pose. Wait, can you mute the microphone, please? Yep. Yep. Put the warrior. Some more dynamic shapes on his jacket, and I just try to avoid those vertical points, vertical shapes. It just doesn't give you um, the the dynamic. Which this better would be just like this. Maybe a little bit smaller, not to point the just empty space here. Uh, maybe like this. Oh. Put it here. And make him just standing very powerful and he is just certain of his power just give some more values on the on the rocks uh, yeah Crop it out. Enlarge with layer. So we have, yeah, you can easily see how much the epicness it just gained. And just standard rendering mode. Polishing the shapes. Fixing the high lights and uh, all the values as we just uh, and it was just told not once today avoid clear dark it will um, put uh, you in the next level if you just go away from the dark dark uh, pure black and give you just a little bit more 
clean effect into the pieces. You can use just some blacks in the final touches. But for now, let's keep focused on half tones and all the stuff. You just easily can uh, make the impression of the solid is has its own form, absorbing the lights. We can just um, emphasize it on the edges. Yeah, some rendering of the rocks here. This doesn't need to be complex at all. More just like a hint uh, of the material. Okay, and I would like to just no, redraw this dragon. If you want to just save that bright sky, don't use only white. It just doesn't. It just don't, doesn't tell you anything about what's going on on the on the sky. So put some more gradations and of course you can just uh, enlighten the clouds again. Oh, there you go. Yeah, shit happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the work. Uh, when uh, when it just interrupted me, Wojtek? Just a few seconds ago, so okay. just okay. go straight. Okay, let's go back to the rendering mode. So, yeah, as I said, uh, avoid only clean whites and use it as the emphasis of the shapes for clouds maybe or in other ones just gives you the effect of I don't know mm, the material it is just uh, easy to catch you can you can even um, handle it just use a lot of gradation for the values it uh, yeah you can see here you just had um, a lot of bright strokes which didn't uh, tell me anything about what's going on on the clouds uh, on the sky sorry so now you just easily have gradiated uh, sky and some regular uh, clouds in here so um, a little bit more on it work we just avoided clearly uh, on all that fragment, all that area, we just avoided only bright, bright, clean white. 
and get rid of it. So let's cleaning up further here on the, I don't know, it's kind of water or so. I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. Uh, let's outline the water surface maybe. Uh, the same situation with color absorption from the sky. It just doesn't illuminate in that way. Water is. Uh, Wojtek? Yeah. Uh, can you mute down a little bit your microphone? <coughs> Yeah, I try to fix that. I just wanted to join you a bit, so I tried to just move down. Okay, okay, no problem. Because it's uh, it's just too sensitive, right? Right. Okay. So yeah, let's make the surface of the water. You can easily see how how the sh shadows are divided into the water, how the surface works with different vibrations of coloristic way, and how it bounds, um, how it bounds the, the image, which is just casted like in the mirror, but the water is, I, don't, I, I will tell you a bit about that, it's just not here you have just regular rock, and here is the water, and just doesn't make the image one-to-one -one the same as the object who, which is m mirrored. Uh, all on the effect of, of how it's mirrored uh, in the water, uh, there are many aspects which uh, have affect it, like um, uh, wh wind is coming and just scattering the, the waves around and uh, all the mirror images are just uh, cut it and cropped, uh, scattered around and um, if the water is very um, calm and the, the weather is, is very cheerful, uh, the water for sure will minor it, uh, mirror uh, the image and uh, make it much more uh, visible, uh, but it, but cl clear, clean of the water. If the water is clean, uh, the image is uh, also uh, more visible on the, on the, on the, the surface, the, the image which is uh, bounced. Uh, so yeah, there's, a lot of observation you have to put into into your into your workspace while while working on on the water space it a water surface it it just doesn't uh, you know it just doesn't um, it just isn't the mirror we just show you the picture of what's coming from Mm, what is what is casting and what's coming uh, from around? So uh, the water is a very um, complex uh, subject, and to study it in a good way, you gotta you need a lot of observation, a lot of references, uh, trying to understand what's going on here, um, and all that stuff. So. I, I really like the way you simplified the planes, so it's much more, it's but, but it's nicer right now, it's uh, much more clear. Uh, thanks man, I just, uh, based on the gradation of the object, it's mm -hmm. the gradation of the values gives you much more uh, awareness of what's going on and what, what will I do with, with the values, uh, the, the most uh, dark parts are just separated from the lighter ones and it just makes the um, overall picture like the whole. As I said it uh, in the color theory section, it all needs the um, appropriate division of the values. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I just um, make the layer with 
colors, uh, color mode, and fill it with uh, dark or just clean black, you can easily switch um, through the paper. Values, right? Yeah, values, to check right? your values, it's just great uh, trick, and it's very easy way to keep your work um, keep your work pointed as you want it to to do it. So, yeah. It's that's, a, that's a very cool trick. You just have to do another layer uh, on a. It can be a black layer on color mode. Yeah, it can. Or, uh, yeah, it just. Uh, it yeah. can be also the mask with black and white uh, filter or or so uh, uh, on the, the balance. It all uh, gives almost the same results. So yeah, it's just for checking and it really helpful is. So I I guess. So yeah. Don't yeah, it, it's very easy uh, to lose a little bit of your value structure when you're painting just in color because it's um, when you see like a very bright co color like yellow, you tend to think that it's very light, but sometimes it's not. It, it can be quite yeah, light. exactly. It's just the same subject like you you told with that squares, uh, something which is. Uh, the same color, but in the uh, in a different background, seems to be uh, another. Seems to have another values, and if you um, just try to uh, try to check your values, it just can be. Oh my God, it's the same, and you you, you just people's uh, people's uh, eyes don't see that uh, minor differences. Mm -hmm. That's right. What are you doing now with that yellow? Yeah, I'm just putting a little bit uh, more color richness into the surface. Uh -huh. uh, an overlay layer, right? Yeah, let's uh, just imagine that the um, the water is I don't know maybe two meter uh, two meters uh, deep, and uh, on on the on the ground it, there are a lot of grass, and mm -hmm. it all gives you the um, some kind of I don't know. Um, the effect of greenish from a, it's just like subsurface scattering. It's it's it, yeah. The water is the water is just uh, transparent and um, it's uh, absorb a lot of colors not only from outside of uh, of how the light is coming through 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 the water but also from uh, from the deepness and it gives you. Mm, all the nice mixing colors and yeah, all the gradation is just rich, richness, richer with with mm, different uh, hues and and um, the object which gives you the, 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 that expression or or image. If you have any questions, feel free to type it in in the comments right now. Uh, I think we have some time to ask uh, to ask some questions. So. Yeah. If you just have anything, just write down, and we have to answer. So you are also dividing the image to get some more depth into it. So you are putting more planes in the distance. Right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I I used to make uh, a lot of details in on every plane. And my picture looked uh, some kind of flatter, flatter, and uh, the division of the planes was wasn't uh, the exact, and uh, I just didn't uh, realize what's what's going on. And after I I started using layer uh, checking with values, it helped me a lot to 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 learn myself. Mm, uh, it's very simple, right? Yeah, learn. Yeah, just just uh, understanding how it works. So I just um, sometimes I took the photos or or um, just trying to observe a lot of uh, nature, uh, comparing the values. It's uh, so it's so uh, difficult uh, while you're working from the nature uh, and. You are looking exactly on something which is in colors. Everything is in colors, but you still have to um, still have to learn how to divide exact values. 
it is that so that's why I guess um, painting from stills or 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 <coughs> is the most valuable ones. So uh, at least one a week, and it will give you a lot of more knowledge and awareness of your works because yeah you you just uh, sometimes can point them point the values good but you are not understanding why so that's the problem too yeah that's true, that's true. also um, don't uh, expect the results of your studying to come right away it takes a lot of time to get your um, to get it into your like deep brain to make it like your reaction yeah, exactly. Uh, to what's happening on the canvas because it's much more complex than that. You know, you're learning and it's there. No, it's not. It's like going into the memory, setting it there, uh, laying there for a while, and then it soaks in and not everything. So exactly. that's why we have to study that much and with that consistency. Yeah, you have to be just more patient to uh, keep focused on. Mm, what you, you want to understand it, but because sometimes you just see something is not going mm, going on good in good way, something's wrong on the picture. But if you are not aware what's what can it be, you will not uh, you will not uh, fix it uh, very soon. So uh, practicing and practicing. And your way of improvement will be much easier. Uh, Darek, can you just uh, make a priority on your monitor on Google because it's switching back and forth between me, mine, and yours? Oh, okay. Good. How, ma how many viewers do we have? Uh, we have almost 100. It's just... Okay, nice. So yeah, it's it was it was uh, for more than two hours. Uh, more than uh, 100, so I, I think it's all right. Yeah, Very cool. Boring, boring as fuck, so. Yeah, and uh, my, <laughs> English, a question and, to you. And my yeah. English sucks as hell, so. <laughs> but your fucking painting skills doesn't. <laughs> all right, man, there is a question. How, okay. do you, how do you get a good texture on the rock uh, without destroying your values? Uh, it's all about the strokes. I used to think that uh, I used to think that a uh, good rocky brush is your key. I just um, tried to um, figure out how the shapes are coming through cast from custom shapes and uh, how it can be um, it, it can be depicted in very easy way by your own, not using photos or or um, textures uh, it was a long way to to just learn for me maybe you will learn it, uh, learn it ver more soon but you have to first um, for first you have to understand the shapes so if the rock uh, the rock isn't just the stone with some some curves it's just a lot of minor um, value changes which gives you the uh, effect of of surface of uh, overall rocky rocky texture uh, and all that stuff so I, I, I just um, I just used to make as many outlines or just line works something like that and it gives me gave, gave me Okay, it gave me the shapes, but what's what's next? It's just values. It's just hard, uh, hard subject, and it it just took me a lot of time to understand. But finally, I managed to do that. And division of the values is just the key. You can just see it. You can play around with floppy shapes and. After that, you can cut them into the rocky ones. It leaves you a lot of uh, a lot of space to to just enrich your texture without uh, any texture brush at all. So, yeah, it keeps your keeps keeps your observating uh, for most of the time 
uh, how the values are divided on the racks or 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 how the um, how the what are the values of some of only texture so you can see um, some cracks are not just okay like this it flatters you it i don't know what go, what what is it right now but if you want to unify it you have to unify the values at first and divide it into accurate ones like this and you can easily see it's occurring the some kind of rocky rocky texture right now so that's the key there, there is another question coming thanks for that 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 I think is very useful um, there's another question coming uh, can you push uh, the depth in the water? Yeah, it's just... I, I would like to so see some tips on, with that. I think uh, uh, it is about not the like a depth of the water, like it's how deep it is, but you know how far away is it. Yeah, uh, but it, it also uh, is all about the... Um, division of the contrast in it. As you can see the water is a little bit too bright right now. It just mm, isn't accurate I guess uh, in, in the sense of of the deep like you said Wojtek. So the shadow would be a, a little bit more deeper and darker maybe and yeah it just gives the water more, more deeper, deeper and uh, mm, deeper effect. I, I think so. Yeah, that's, that's this. You can. Mm, I would like to tell something about uh, values yet. It would be just a, a quick note that don't hesitate to exaggerate with your. Yeah, look at this. Don't uh, don't uh, scare of that. This is very dark part right now. So it just um, make it even more focal, or just the same focal like this. You can also um, you can always just make only deep uh, deep shadows and later fix it fix them, subdue it. With just a lighter or lighter colors on, I don't know, light, light and layer uh, on very small opacity, and yeah, you you still have a lot of contrast in here, and it just gave you um, the mass, the effect of the mass on that picture, but uh, it's still. Is in the I think yeah almost uh, accurate value. So don't uh, don't uh, stop with just I don't know uh, very light uh, curves and the solids. You can also you can almost try um, with something like this. Let me show you. Uh, I can just make a thumbnail with the same the same value on every part it and the division of the of the division we just came naturally later on so you can just make some thumbnail I don't know maybe some shapes in the sky and you can just gradiate it mm. And uh, merge it, and you just have the base of the overall value. So you can reach the color and the uh, shadow density with enlightening the effects, which gives you accurate uh, accurate value like this, and you almost see that it's coming and bouncing 
uh, like it's just three dimensional object right now. So yeah, don't uh, don't hesitate to exaggerate with values very very black, maybe not black but very dark at once, and enlighten enlighten them in the other parts. So you, so you, you just can put it here, very light right right now, and. Uh, and yeah, you can you have almost uh, the division of the values. So yeah, this is this is my this is my clue. Tech, are you here? Yep. Okay. Any other questions or so on the chat on the chat? Let me see. There is some kind of strange language going on in the stream. I have no idea what they are talking about, but I cannot see any more questions. We have 15 minutes more. I think you did a really good job on these mountains. You should have showed the form on them. Really well, works good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, maybe show up to before and after your overpainting. Yep. I just mm, group it into one. Yeah, just group it. Do not flat, flatten it. So maybe it yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing I think is just you, you just make a person bigger. So it, it, it's more yeah. identity, you know. Mm -hmm. It just makes like a person. It just make uh, the composition more um, complete. Really? Complete, I guess. And yeah, that is just a change. Still, French language going on in the stream. I have no idea what you're talking about, guys. Maybe try some English, huh? For a change. Uh, I can see some questions about explaining of warm and cold, coldness, coolness, colors related in distance. So, yeah, it's just uh, some kind of go golden um, theory that uh, you can switch through through color warming, uh, which is what is uh, in cold on the in the back foreground and. Uh, Sometimes it's warm in the background, and um, on the opposite situation, it's just the cold in background and uh, the warm in the foreground. Yeah, yeah. there is there's a rule that uh, yeah, like warmer colors would look much more uh, closer to us, and colder ones is much more distant. So that's the rule you can use to. Uh, set up your composition. Yeah, that it looks a little bit closer. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of great illustration based on that. That just simple, simple thing, I guess. So, uh, yeah, but uh, you can also make something uh, pretty monochromatic uh, in warm colors or so, and it still um, has a lot of depth in it if you are just divide the values in the right way. So but by Kai Okay but uh, let's I will just uh, okay, start with that. All right, so I'm thinking this piece already looks really, really nice, and my uh, critique will be very good. Uh, 
This is actually very nice. Uh, sorry. Can you switch the headphones or just through? Okay, okay. I will mute it. Okay. All right. Thanks. So what I see in here, it's a really cool environment with uh, a lot of um, cool shapes going on. And actually, uh, I really love the colors. Look at that. It's pretty sweet compared to these worms. It, it really looks very magical. So um, what I would do differently with that piece, I would arrange shapes in a different manner to exaggerate and to add depth. It's not necessary, but I think it will, it will create much more um, better three-dimensional effect. Like you see, the, sm the smallest shapes are the closest ones. Let me take a red thing. The smaller shapes are the ones clo the closest to us, right? So the, clo the, 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 the smallest, really the smallest shape is the one the clo that is the closest one to us, right? And it, as it goes further away, it goes bigger. Right, it goes bigger, bigger, and bam, bigger. Actually, I think it would work better if you do it the other way around. So the objects that are, that are closer to you are bigger, and as they move away, they are uh, shrinking. So let's see. Let's try to do some cutting cutting and pasting, taking that one big shape and just really shrinking it down to a really small one. Like I said, it's not necessary, but I think it will work uh, for the better to show the scale of these rocks, rock formations you will actually feel that they are receding in the space. So let's take this one. Now let's take this one and make it a little bit bigger. Like that. But you see, it already looked much more epic and let's take this one and that rock actually because you haven't put any character into the scene so I think that's a good place for a focal point in here so let's try to make a focal point out of this rock and maybe put some character in there or maybe let's just focus on creating a nice focal point that would be that rock in here. I'm not changing the shape so much but I think it would really work nice if you would just make that kind of a bigger one and if, it, if that is our um, focal point uh, it would be the best to make it the more contrasty thing going on in the picture. The, mo the most contrast going on, I think it's in here and it's here. So let's try to tone down a bit things that are happening in here. Just a tiny bit, like that. Like you see, there is a plenty of like a empty space going on. So maybe let's take some cloud brush and just indicate that there's some kind of cloud thing going on. Nothing fancy, it's a little bit too much, but you know, there's some information right there. Also, let's try to uh, finesse that silhouette a bit. I mean, I really like that. Maybe it lacks a, a, a bit of curve. Like, if you want, because this rock is pretty stylized, so you can actually make it a little bit more sexier than it is right now. So always I mean, sexier shapes, always yeah. sexier shapes. Oh, yeah. Fuck here you are right. 
let's try let's try to shoot for some you know continuous line. You looks like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. I don't think so. Just joking, man. Keep going. Good job. So let's see. I'm trying to. I don't think that's better. It looks like a dick. So I would try to reverse to what you have. It's a pretty solid rocky texture. I like the stylization, so I won't change it that much. You don't want to make a dick from your rock, right? So if you have that kind of a simple shape, the small area that can be a little bit more mm, finessed is nice. So you can actually indicate that there's some detail, detail go, details going on, but not as much on the whole silhouette. So it stays sexy along the way. But there's a small area that there's some kind of things going on, like little joints sticking out of the rock. So there's a suggestion that this rock is pretty complicated shit, but for the purpose of this painting, you just make it a little bit. Yeah. And I would say also, uh, it's a little bit flat. Like, you, uh, the depth of the rock is actually much better in here. So I would just take that because it's our focal point. Right. So let's get rid of these whites in here. Let's get rid of that rock at all. Let's maybe take some of these rocks that are in here. Like that, and just take that and paste it in the background. Shrink it down. Let me paint over the top. So there's indication that there's some kind of similar rock formations in the background. I think what you need in here, like we decided that this is a focal point, so you have to make something interesting, you have to create some visual interest. So first thing, I would make it a three-dimensional form, so I would make it a solid 3D shape. Like I can see that you indicated some of it, so you can think a little bit more about it in terms of form. What kind of light it would pick up from the rocks behind? A little bit glowy. So if you have that kind of effect in here, there's some strange glow coming off, uh, coming out of the ground. So maybe it's some kind of crystals. Right, that are glowing, that are like planted around this area. So maybe let's try to <clears throat> create some of them in here. Just trying to create some visual interest in here. Not worrying about shape so much, just interest. I don't know if that is a good idea, but you know, some kind of blue stuff that's giving that glow. And that would also explain your viewer what the heck is that glow. So let's go a little bit for a glowy effect of these guys. Yeah. Uh, maybe that rock would be cool if that would be just more. Cut it, not just round it in top of the shape. Let's in here? Keep... Yeah, let's try it. Round? No, no, but not, not round, just uh, cut in some way, maybe. Oh. Cut it. Yeah. Just try it, maybe. Um, 
Uh, it's yeah. more more pointed, more pointed to the top, I guess. Not in the back, just in in the top, maybe. Yeah, that's good. Much better than the rounded one. Yeah, because a round, rounded surface wasn't in the character of the rock itself. So it was yeah, it was just a sexy shape. <clears throat> yeah, so let's try to uh, do some lightning on this. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it, so I'm just moving a little bit of that here. And right now, as you see, and as I told you about, let's put some light in here. As I told you about, the light is giving, well, this is a blue light source, right? So let's take that blue, this blue, and spread it over the actual rock. So it looks like affected by these guys. So all the planes that would face more, more or less these areas would be a little bit. We are lacking the texture in here, of course. But I'm just roughing it in to create some kind of interest. We need a lot of, like, you know textural things going on, rocky shit. So you have to think what's happening with planes. You have to design all the rock things going on in here, other planes. And they would get less intense as they go uh, higher up. So let me do a small. Also, the ground in here. Would be a little bit covered in this blue light. Give a little bit of that in here. There's a little bit too much of the bright areas in this kind of these things, crystals or whatever. It can be whatever you want. And maybe that's too cheesy for you. Maybe that's too cheap. You can maybe you are sh shooting for a much more subtle effect. And you're free to do that. I mean, that's the beauty of that kind of stuff, right? You're just creating what you want. So there's some kind of light going there, right? I just wanted to indicate some stuff. Yeah, it's pretty messy. It needs more uh, defined shapes. So maybe. That's some kind of a crystal thing. So it needs a little bit of definition. You can put those shapes in the distance. Also, we can play around some kind of interest that is going through in here, like water and things. Maybe that's too bright, maybe that's too much. I don't know, I'm just experimenting with the visual interest that I could give to this piece to make it more interesting. Couple more um, adjustment I would do. I'd probably make it a little bit more a little bit dark dark. Uh, 
like that. From now on, paint out these black areas a bit and give them a little bit of a color. Yeah, so there's maybe some kind of protected light in here. And also, what I would do is actually put some kind of person in here. Trying to tone down the sky a little bit. Also define the shape. What is happening in here? It would be best if it, if it would point straight into the focal point. We can do that right now. Like you see, we can make this rock. Of course, we can uh, vary this line a bit to suggest it's a rock. But what mainly it can do, it can point straight into our focal point like that. It's going all the way through. Also, it may be a little bit too blocky to half of the page. So you can add more lights to break this shape up a bit. Let's do a strong overlap and a little bit of the uh, fog that's setting stuff into the distance. Yeah, and right now we we'll just add some kind of guy. I don't know. Stick man, whatever you want. Maybe someone on the horse. I don't know, that's the cliche for you. Maybe you want a guy with a cafe standing in here and just watching this shit, wondering what the fuck is that? What the hell am I seeing? I haven't seen that kind of blue shit anywhere else. Sweet God, what the hell is that? You have to feel that. You know, you have to just tell yourself a story in your head, and that would be the easiest thing. Like, what would you do with, like, how would you want to see that kind of place if you would be there? What the hell? The fuck? The fuck is that? Hey, mom, what the hell is that? Create that kind of story. I mean, not with your mom, but you know what I mean. So I think it just needs a couple of, you know, it's a little bit of a stylized guy from the journey. Nothing too fancy. All right. Let's move. Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? Well, maybe he's got guys. Kind of, you know, just. It's like, mm -hmm, what the hell is that? We can, we can stay in here. Like that. You know, maybe he doesn't have to be here. It's nice like that. You know, I think that's it. Let me save it for you. Yeah, let's keep the PSD, yeah, Wojtek, and. Yeah. Oh, it's 10. It's after 10. I think we are done. Yeah, I thought uh, about just one very quick, uh, one very quick uh, tip for Chemnitzwaf Selmer. Can I will just give it five minutes or so, maybe. So I think we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. And uh, question: Are some questions on chat? Maybe Wojtek, you will get rid of that and. Uh, Why is I I'm just working on Chemislav work? All right. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Very similar situation on uh, Chemislav work like the previous ones. Mm, very. Very very bright bright tones on overall the picture. It looks uh, like the fog or the mist. And yeah, if we just want to divide the the paint, um, we can stay with that misty misty effect. But it just needs to be more outlined in the right way. So again. 
just um, subdue overall that white clean white and leave it only on the in the foreground maybe uh, I presume it's just snowy mountains or so uh, so yeah uh, let's just unify the shadows uh, we don't have a lot of the clouds in here so yeah don't forget um, about the grayish a lot of gray in the shadows not much blue blendings uh, you can just um, outline the shapes a little bit more to be more solid and just they look uh, like a, um, like a stone pretty hard and huge ones I guess I don't know what what that art is I uh, I would uh, um, tell you don't do uh, that kind of shapes which are uh, which are not telling the viewer anything about the shapes and what's what is it just make it to the regular cast regular shapes of mountains I guess and it still has the foggy it still has the foggy and misty mm, feeling in that and yeah it's it's also the divide divided but we have to clear some things up yet so let's draw on the on the rocks yet put some snow in between them to to make it mm, to make the distance like this or this the foreground some more darker one this here and more contrasty shadows so more gray grays and uh, just more visible bluish but not that much keeping in mind that there are no that much there is a lot of clouds and the fog is uh, floating around so colors from the sky are just subdued a lot but you, c you can still richness the part where um, presumably the sky is clean from the from the clouds, so maybe like this one. Uh, actually, there was a question. I will just uh, say something different because there was a question about adjusting. Uh, about filters that I use to adjust my images. Uh, I can switch for a minute, just for a second to my screen. I will okay. do a quick demo of okay. the production I'm doing. All right, so here's an image, right? And uh, what I basically do is using uh, these um, adjustment players things. So basically, I'm just looking at the picture and uh, telling myself, OK, what what do I want? What do it lack? And uh, I'm trying different things, like I pick the color balance stuff, I'm changing things in shadow. Because there is a like a cyan thing going on, an opposite color to that would be an orange. So it would be nice to have that kind of feel. So I would increase the yellow and the highlights. 
and increase blue in the shadows. So that would be that. Then I, I would do a vibrance pass just to see what looks better. Lower, higher. That looks better if it's a little bit rise up, I think. A huge amount of saturation works good for that picture because it looks like uh, very stylized stuff. Like you see, there's a lot of black spots in here that occurred during the process of overpainting. I do not like that. So I tend to put an exposure layer on the top, uh, putting offset way up, closing it, and adjusting opacity. So this is like an instant atmosphere layer. So like you see, it flattens. You have to be very careful. I just want it to work just a tiny, tiny bit, just to get rid of the black stuff. It's maybe even too much. Back off all the black stuff. Yeah, I also can use the curves to adjust my colors. It, it depends really. C curves are much more flexible in terms of changing color than just a color balance layer. Um, yeah. And we can also just change the levels of this piece just a tiny bit. Yeah, so I would do that non destructively doing adjustment layers and then I would just flatten the image, uh, probably go to lens correction under the filter mode, do some, I don't know, chromatic aberration if you need that. That's kind of a cheap effect for speed painting, but you know. And also something yet like that. Very good about it. It doesn't look good on that picture. It's a wide shot. So let's say that would be enough. Let's flip it. Okay. Yeah. Can can I okay, I will go back to the picture, yeah? Sure. So um, let's go back to the that snowy one by Premiswap. <laughs> it still lacks of some colors for for the solids of the rocks. Yes, this is probably too light. I for now, but let's check it. Yeah, we have to divide more into the depth. But now let's just separate Fuji and uh, with mist a little bit more on that one. Just shape the area. Keep more foggy and misty ones. So yeah, it's just uh, it's just a nice. Um, Division, I guess. Uh, let me see this. Yeah, it's almost misty, epic one right now. So um, I just go to brightness and contrast a little bit. You can also use the levels, uh, levels filter like Voitex said it uh, a while ago. So we can a little bit. Mm, put the brightness down and uh, contrast can be on the same level still, but maybe a, a little bit more. And you have a nice, mm, nice uh, moody, moody val values right now. So uh, for now, it's a little bit. Dirty in the highlights, I guess. So you can now enrich the palette with look at this, just clean strokes of of uh, enlightened snow. Like this.
and go back to the rock for a little bit time so put it here yeah here and again the division of the values is very important in that kind of pictures yeah you can see the one area is very uh, well shaded right now here it is I know maybe it just stands um, above some epic huge rock uh, rock solid and it just cast the shadow on it but you can still enrich your depth by putting some lights of the things that are not that shady is that area um, above the, the the rock so here you can just do this in that way I guess it still can have some um, absorption of the colors from the sky which is as we know very cloudy overcast and reach the highlight parts you can use a lot of variation with very light bluish and um, violets because they enrich you the palette and the colors of that one. Uh, there is a question. Um, yeah. Mamba Purple. Uh, when you use a song, is it always to make a difference between the first ground and the background? Not really, because uh, yeah, but I I, I I know that people um, are very used to uh, use a lot of smokes and all that stuff to make uh, something um, put it in the distance um, and uh, uh, putting some things in the foreground maybe. Um, but yeah, that's not the only. But not the only uh, the one clue for that. Uh, it's just a misty picture, so the the mist is all around the picture, and it just can um, easily put some division of the plane for your picture. It just gives a lot of um, fine uh, fine sh divisions, maybe. But uh, the most important is, as I said, um, values. Uh, intensity of the, the the dark parts and intensity of the lighter ones, yeah, which gives you the, the that effect. So I think I, I I just made it more clear right now. So and I would still put some contrast into it yeah but still remember that if you brighten it down some things you, you will get a lot of um, some kind of I don't know dirty dirty values so you have to every time check them and maybe and reach just with one stroke like this and yeah it looks much more cleaner Uh, 
let's just define that rock, which is the source of the shadows. And we are doing overtime. Yeah. We gotta finish that, I think. Just two minutes yet. Yeah, you, you did well, I think. It's looking much more clear. Yeah, the uh, no, like this. And yeah, some, mm, some enriching on the overline maybe, or or another mode with mm, it just uh, no, it just about the uh, color. Oh. Yeah, it seems that we <laughs> we are going to the finish there. There you go. Yeah. All right, so I think we are done in here for this week. Uh, we are meeting again next week. Yeah, it just tells us we have to finish. Yeah, yeah, we now. go go home. In fact, yeah, that, that's what as it tells us. All, all right, guys. So, um, thanks. Submit, submit your, your work. work. Uh, this uh, week we did it in of overpainting. We wanted to do something like demo, or so. Maybe next time we will focus on the painting because it was just like more. Work. Work. I hope we will do more next week. So, so thanks, guys. Uh, so, yeah, I think we, we have to uh, we have to more <laughs> do more paint over paintings, but uh, yeah, I think that color theory subject was a okay. good choice, and we have to we have to extend it because it's very wide wide subject, and we got a we got a lot of ideas how to extend and improve our idea our uh, our channel, so yeah. Let's yeah, see you, man. Also, because the the whole level up thing is split between uh, the channel of mine and uh, Darex, so I just created a playlist that will contain all the videos. So, so I will share the channel later on, on another later on, so we can go back to it and see all the transitions in one place. All right. So yeah. have a good evening. Morning, day, everything. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.